Welcome to your CCPS Science Review Lab. When you're looking at these two pictures, how do you think maybe you could relate them to what you've learned about the rock cycle? Any specific process come to mind? Maybe a specific type of rock? For me, I think of metamorphic rock because I'm starting with a product over here and I'm applying a tremendous amount of heat and I'm ending up with a whole new product over here. Well, that's one step in the rock cycle as we remember it. One of the things I've always told my students is that when we first taught you about the rock cycle in fourth grade, we made it very simplistic. We talked to you about sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous rock. And we said that maybe you'd start with igneous rock and then it would break down and you'd get sedimentary rock and then you'd have a whole lot of heat and pressure and you'd end up with metamorphic rock. And it was a very simplistic description because really that was your introduction. When you revisited the rock cycle in sixth grade, you came to understand that there were more parts of the process, that we also had magma and sediment, and that there were a lot of verbs involved. We had melting and we had cooling, we had heat and pressure, weathering and erosion. When we look at the rock cycle though, it's very important to, yes, understand the different kinds of rock and where they come from. But it's equally important to understand how all of these processes connect to what happens on Earth's surface or right below the surface. So for example, if we're talking about maybe igneous rock melting, becoming magma, and then having an opportunity to cool, well, somehow that magma came out from the asthenosphere and had the opportunity to cool. So what sort of event might create that? Well, you, you could have a volcanic eruption. You could have seafloor spreading where you've got that, that magma coming up and cooling. So remember, we want to understand the rock cycle and we need to know all the important vocabulary. So take the time to write that down, making sure you get all the verbs down. The verbs are what's going to take you from one type of rock or material to another. But then think about what's happening either below the surface or above the surface at the same time. So what does compacting and cementation look like? What does that mean as sediment becomes sedimentary rock? Do you have a glacier coming through and pressing on that sediment for a long period of time until it becomes sedimentary rock and compacting it? Or do we have our volcano or a seafloor spreading? Here's a chance to show me what you know. I want you to go ahead and look at this model of the rock cycle or the model that you've just taken and put in your notebook. And I want you to look at the verbs. Remember the verbs are the action parts. And I want you to break down those processes into two categories. Processes that happen above the ground and processes that happen underground or below the ground. Alrighty, show what you know.